Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillah ar-Rahman. This is like a spiritual question. Um, Sayyidi, when someone else has the temperature, I also feel as though I have the temperature, but mm. magnified. Any understanding on that? You have to get somebody to slap that person and then slap you and see if you felt that. <laughs> you could have an affinity with people and your heart. So there can be such a connection and such a bond and such a love that the feeling and the emotions of one can be felt by another. And those whom are training their hearts, the heart is a fine-tuned instrument in which we describe tuning. So the purpose of being loyal with the shaykh is the whole subject of tuning. If you come into the zikr, the shaykh is vibrating with a frequency. And let's say for your understanding to put into words, he's vibrating at a 10, another shaykh is at a 9, at another shaykh at a 8, not in powers but in different frequencies. The reality of what the shaykh is doing is that when you come into their association, whether live or online, they're going to negate you, they're going to teach you, they're going to bring down all of your frequencies. And then they're going to resonate with their frequency onto you. So then you become like a, what's that a pitch, sound pitch, the t sound fork, sound tuner or pitch, pitch tuner, tuner fork, huh? Tuna fork? <laughs> a tuning fork. So you put it up and you go I have my own special effects. <laughs> and then the other thing goes <laughs> you can actually tune something because it's all based on to your frequency. As soon as you hit the one thing, the other thing is vibrating the same. What do you think then the power of the heart? Which is the most delicate instrument from Allah's creation. When you're tuned with the shaykh, when you're doing the practices they're telling you, keeping the way of what they're telling you, they're negating your frequency. As soon as you attend their associations, you're vibrating at their frequency. Their energy is dressing your zikr, their frequency is dressing your frequency. And that's why Shaykh, Sharaf, Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani said, just sit five minutes with me and I take you to my station. They're inheriting from that reality. That as soon as they're on their frequency, they're uplifting the servant to where they are. So means these realities of attuning, as soon as you begin to train in tafakkur, train in the way of tariqah, your heart becomes very sensitive. And you may go somewhere and feel your heart is beating very fast as if you feel agitation but it's not you that's agitated. You could be talking to somebody who's very angry and you feel their heartbeat moving very fast that you feel uncomfortable, you think something's wrong with you, what's wrong? It's not you but it's a tuned piece of equipment. If it goes somewhere where someone's resonating very angry, very aggressive, you can feel it. And there are many students who will begin to feel. That's why we said then pay attention to your heart. When you enter into somewhere your heart telling you something's not right, something's not right, get out. When you go somewhere and someone's talking a certain way and you feel in your heart something's not right, something's not right. So yes, this is the beginning of understanding attuning and this is the, the beginning of the understanding of the realities of sound. Sound is something that it's not imaginable how important sound is and how the sound can manipulate everything. So the frequency in which they resonate and that's Allah's gift. It's not that they're a cappellos and they practice a certain sound, it's not that reality and then you start to change. It's a reality of their soul because their light is an energy, energy is a sound. Yusabbihuwa bihamdi for everything is praising. So the praise that Allah gives their soul 
is by Allah's power. So it's, He's not saying something at a sound level that people don't understand. It's the gift that Allah gave to His soul that Allah has written a hamd within their soul. That soul has the power to influence other souls. So you see it as light and the lights are influencing, in reality it's an energy so the energy is influencing, its highest reality is actually it's a sound and the sound of that shaykh is influencing your soul, inshaAllah. Someone asked a question, uh, Sidi, can you please enlighten us on about the realm of barzakh and realm of malakut? That requires a whole show, <laughs> inshaAllah. But alhamdulillah the teaching is all about malakut, the world of light. And to reach towards that world of light in this life, how to be dressed from the world of light and how to take the understanding from malakut and not the mulk, not the physical realm for every understanding but the realm of light and what's the importance of the realm of light. One understanding is it's timeless, there's no time, light has no time, it's constant. So then anything from the world of light is timeless, so then that has a huge understanding for us. The barzakh and what happens within the grave is our whole preparation of tariqah. That what do you want to do with your light? You want to build it now or you want to build it in the grave where then becomes the separation of mulk and malakut. Because as soon as you enter the grave your physicality ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Your physicality is going to go away and your spirituality, your soul has to separate. That process of separating can be very painful for people or if you play if you took a path in which all your life you practice that separation. You are able to separate from your physicality by your meditation, your contemplation and by asking Allah you're able to move your spirituality out of your physicality. So then why would the grave be difficult for you if you achieved that in physicality? But if you looked and you never practiced that, can you imagine then the difficulty of trying to separate these two realities? And that's what becomes the difficulty of barzakh. And everything has to be in the grave, the service has to be in the grave and many different realities they've talked from the world of light inshaAllah. Well one more and then we have dinner inshaAllah, these guys are going to be hungry. Sayyidi, how can one control the whims of his nafs and bad desires and protect himself from his bad desires especially with all such media around? Yeah we've talked on that before many times that all these practices inshaAllah, the shaitan bismillah rahman rahim all these practices, all these zikrs, all these salawats are a fire against the nafs. And why zakah and why giving is a cleansing. So that has a deep reality in following the tariqah, following the advice of the shaykh is give. That every time you give you're taking away a sickness that's being put upon you through your rizq. So why, why Allah asks for zakah? Because what you make has a burden in it, who you made it from, what you did to make that. You're the number one credit card sales guy that all these people have credit cards that they don't need. There's burdens in everything. Everything that somebody does is accountable for something to Allah so he knows that, that whatever we're going to do in life is making burdens. So the concept of zakah was what? That begins to clean it. So it's like an infection that insan can't see upon themselves. When the infections are festering and festering and festering they only see the bad characteristics. But what only Allah are supposed to see? The scabs. They see that all these difficulties that shaitan is putting upon the body of all of these sicknesses and all these things that making the desire upon the person. So every time they give it's as if they went to the doctor and he cut the abscess, right? Because if you have a big abscess you just say, I have a lot of pain, I can't move my leg. 
But what the doctor sees, he sees an infection. So if he cuts the abscess means he cuts all of the bacteria that come out. Only then can a healing begin. So then there's a tremendous reality in being of service. Your zakat can be your time, can be your ability, can be whatever Allah has given to you, you put into that way to heal yourself, to participate. Anytime you do something wrong punish yourself. That if you're continuously watching something you're not supposed to be watching then say, every time I watch it I'm going to give $50 to Mawlid. It makes you something against your naf before the shaykhs punish themselves. But we don't want to talk like that because then people can you know in inflict difficulty. But there has to be a consequence in yourself. Otherwise it's a continuous line that you pass. So say, every time I do something wrong that I didn't want to do I'm going to pay a fine. So that fine not only is something on your ego that, oh gosh we, we, you know, we're going to empty our account like that <laughs> but at the same time it's immense <laughs> barakah because you're giving in the way of Allah oh, right. So there's all sorts of ways that you can handle that. Anyone who wants to pray drink a lot of water before you sleep. So all night long you have to wash and make wudu. So there's all systems in which to implement to achieve what we have to achieve. InshaAllah we tune in for tomorrow night and Saturday night and try to address everyone more. Thank everyone for tuning online. Remember that we have uh, BMTV, British uh, Muslim Television is now in the UK Thursday, Saturday night it's live then Thursday is a rebroadcast. But those satellites are available worldwide. So online we've posted uh, where those channels are available on satellite networks and inshaAllah if we have friends in the UK and different places if they can send the link for those and uh, communicate and email the help me at nurmuhammad.com and inshaAllah we, we try to build everything more and more. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzatam ma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmat Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Jum'a mubarak to everyone inshaAllah, shukran. Click the link now to subscribe.